What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Welcome back to another episode of the Hook It Podcast. Once again, we are supported by our very good friends over at Saks Underwear. Now, one of Saks' main strap lines is life-changing underwear. And anybody who has tried this brand will know that Saks is, in fact, life-changing for a number of reasons. Number one, the first thing most people do every day is put on a pair of underwear. Now, if you start your day with a nice pair of viscous underwear, maybe a nylon polyester blend, maybe the vault, your day is going to be better. You're going to feel better. You're going to smell less, which means your week's going to be better, which means the month is going to be better, which means the life is going to be better. It's as simple as that. One of the other reasons is they feature the patented ballpark pouch, which keeps your nuts where they need to be. Stops that skin on skin friction, no more bat wing, no more nut sack stuck to the inside of your thigh, which means you will be more productive. You're not, you know, using your hands for stuff you shouldn't be doing all day, which readjusting. You're going to be using your hands to work, to start a business, to hug your, hug your wife, hug your girlfriend, hug your kids. Again, life will be better. It is life-changing underwear. If you want to find out more, head over to saxunderwear.com or head to your local bike, ski, run, outdoor climbing center and ask for sacks guarantee they're either going to stock it and if they don't then tell them we sent you we are also brought to you by hookitproducts.co.uk hook it is the one-stop shop for all your action sports goodies whether you're a mountain biker and you need brake pads brake rotors frame protection mud guards or you're interested in some sunglasses whatever it could be hookitproducts.co.uk has it Enter the promo code PODCAST and that will get you 10% off anything and everything on the store. Okay, so today's episode is another one of those rather different ones. Many of you will know that earlier this year, towards the end of April, my friends and I embarked on a trip which is called the Caledonian Canal, where you canoe from Fort William in Scotland up to Inverness. You take in a bunch of beautiful canals and locks and on the third day, we ran into some trouble. The canoe capsized that we were on uh, and we were left stranded in Loch Ness, which is meant to be around four or five degree water. Uh, we were about a kilometre and a half from each side. And if it wasn't for some incredible people, then we wouldn't be here today. Um, my friends and I decided after we put out the last episode, which is called Always Prepare for the Worst. So if you haven't heard that, Scroll down your podcast feed and take a listen to that one first, where we tell the whole story about what happened that day and some of the things that came from it uh, in regards to being prepared and and basically being thankful to be alive because of this incredible service. Well, a couple of incredible services. Um, most importantly, the RNLI. These guys came to our rescue. I was airlifted out of the water after being in Loch Ness for around 50 minutes, deep onset hypothermia internal organs starting to shut down a couple of days in hospital but again if it wasn't for this these services i wouldn't be here today there would be no podcast and hopefully some people would be quite upset and um, so we decided that we would run a marathon to raise money for the rnli we are not runners this thing as you will hear on the podcast had been hella difficult to train for but we decided we'd do it. We set a goal and in a couple of weeks on the 6th of October, myself and two of my friends, James and Alex, will run the Loch Ness Marathon, run right past where we nearly left our lives, throw up a middle finger at that water and carry on and beat this thing. Um, so if possible, please help by making a donation. I know I sound like a stuck record right now. Trust me, I've banged on about this thing for many, many, many months. But if you could please make a donation, all of the money is going to the RNLI, which is a 100% charity service. They're run on donations and volunteers. And if it wasn't for people like that, saving people like mine, like my lives, then a lot of people would be in a lot of trouble. So we've got to be thankful for these services. We've got to try and support them. We've got to go out of our comfort zones to do things, to raise money for them. And that is exactly what me and my friends are doing. So please if you haven't already, pause this podcast, scroll down into the show description where you will find a link to make a donation. Again, all of the money is going direct to the RNLI. I don't want it. We don't want it. We just want to run this marathon um, and raise some money. So I'm not going to waffle on anymore. 
please enjoy this episode and hopefully you can find it in your heart to either donate some money or just raise awareness by sharing this episode with your friends. Thanks again. I appreciate you, your ears and enjoy the episode. So <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, boys. Dropping in. Another one. Alright, so. You should have a drink, really, after you cheers. You should have a drink. Right. And you've got eye contact. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, how much are you regretting signing up for a marathon? <laughs> the amount of pain I need at the moment, quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. To be honest. <laughs> so, it's been a rough ride so far, but hey ho. Yeah, I really didn't think I'd suffer this much. Right, really? Yeah, in all honesty, I actually thought it was going to... Yeah, I still think the distance is going to be easy enough. It's just if my body actually holds together. Right. It is. Okay. I'm in a lot of pain, man. Yeah, it's mainly from riding though, isn't it? Yeah. But it's tough. This is going to be fucking hard. So let's let's start right... Let's like, like rewind this whole thing a little bit, because I was thinking about how we could start this. So the last episode we did came out. The response was amazing. We've had like, even me and you were running with Chris, and people from his work were talking about listening to it. Yeah. So the last episode yeah. did the rounds. It's had like tens of thousands of downloads, which is rad. There's a few negative comments, which <laughs> one guy said <laughs> that we should have died. <laughs> a, guy actually, a guy actually said that. On the Kotick Instagram was like wow. they should have died. We're like, oh, wow. Thanks. Well, it takes just me. just out of the fact that we we defied the laws of living, or <laughs> that he just was so it was just a poor cretin, <laughs> and he was like, if they should have died. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, the response was ninety nine percent positive, but there were a few negative ones. But obviously, we knew that anyway. I think, and you know, yeah, we were a little yeah. bit silly, I guess, but not. Don't deserve to have died. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit harsh, I feel like. But, yeah. You know, yeah. it's just people and having their own opinion. But yeah, I don't know. Last episode went out. Like I said, the response was amazing. I think I see that more than you two probably because I get a lot of feedback through the Instagram and yeah, social definitely. media stuff. But you know, it's like I said, we were out riding, weren't we? And at running, and even Chris, said, oh my mates at work were listening to it, and it did like it did the rounds through all the R and L I. Um, what they call different outposts they all got links to it and all the teams on there were listening to it and it's crazy it did, it did a round through some sort of sailing club yeah did yeah, a mail, an email, email about it and that. stuff so crazy so yeah I guess I wanted to kick off by saying thank you to everyone who listened who shared and like reached out as well because um, it's pretty nice you know like I said 99% of it was overwhelmingly positive um, but yeah how's I don't know how do you, what do you think? I can't believe someone said we should have died. That's it's just me. <laughs> it's pretty pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> some cold <laughs> for it, really. Unnecessary. <laughs> I mean, what? Why? Why, why, like, why did he even say that? Was it to do with we were just being stupid? Yeah, a bit. If you remember, the the the, the Cotic Instagram went crazy with comments. Did you see it? No. I know you're like not really on the yeah. gram are you these days, yeah. but. No, so no. like obviously the Cotic guys like I think Babel or Sai whoever posted the photo with a bit of a backstory about you because obviously you ride for Cotic, saying how this happened you know we nearly lost Rocket Man and all this sort of stuff, and um, which was really it was a really nice post and then, like for the fi- from what I remember the first sort of twenty four hours I kept having a quick look at the comments and they were really nice yeah you know, people were that, again that's, that's good yeah that's they were really nice but then it started getting a bit. 
people were chiming in. I think then it, it, it seemed to go into a lot more... People must have been sharing it into sort of sailing clubs and canoeing clubs. Right, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So there were a lot of people commenting, basically saying they did this wrong, they should have had this, which, you know... We know that. We knew that. Well, that was the reason why we did the the podcast, wasn't it? (laughs) To be like, look, we we, we made an error, it nearly cost our lives, we're trying to say, go prepared. Yeah. And then people didn't really see that, they're like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did it wrong. <laughs> it's true. It's, Everyone makes a mistake, yeah. and like you said, dude, like that, that is for me. That was the whole objective of us sitting down. It was what a week after it happened. It was all like super raw stuff. Yeah, it was fresh on it. And we still and we sat down and spoke about it, and it was amazing therapy for all of us, I think. And yeah, there's always those dark corners of the internet, but the ultimate goal was to basically spread that message of. Always be prepared. Always prepare for the worst, and I think that was we definitely achieved it. And to be honest, like getting people commenting in a bad thing, kind of helps get exposure for stuff, doesn't it? Because you know yeah, more people see it, they go, oh, "Actually, I want to listen to this. What what on earth did these guys do?" So I don't know. I don't think it's all bad. No, not at all. Yeah. I, th- I think that's I don't know. A lot of people can be quite ignorant with stuff comments like that because they know what they're doing yeah they forget people don't know yeah. everything about and we've all everything. made mistakes no, like, yeah, yeah, with yeah, everything yeah. whether it's Acting walking exactly. running what, anything yeah. driving everything no. you know we've all had we've all made errors it just so happened that has nearly cost us our life but on the plus yeah. side one guy went out and he thought about what we'd said yeah. and he bought that GPS tracker so his dad knew exactly mm. where he was when he was running on that the hills. exactly the same thing so there's some positivity so, coming so out of it so much positive yeah. stuff and it's weird because it's been uh, what was it April weren't it so April, May, June, July August what were we in September, September. so it's been like yeah four and a half months which is crazy it's gone fast I know just like crazy oh. fast it's been like four four months or something. Yeah. Between the last episode going I can out. Now run seven kilometres. <laughs> Unassisted. <laughs> Unassisted. <laughs> We're doing well. Mate, I did my first ten mile the other day. <laughs> you, you're first gonna be in so much pain. You're gonna, yeah, no. you're gonna struggle. <laughs> I know my knees and ankles were killing. Oh, they're ever so sore. <laughs> oh did it on the road and all, made sure we did a road one. When did we when did we make the decision to do this marathon? Was it on the last episode for people like maybe listening? That well, it was on the list anyway, the 30 things to do yeah, before 31. It was. It was, so it it was, was on, on the list. list to do. But then it was one of the guys that was up in the RL and I, he mentioned about the marathon uh, around Loch Ness. And so that is why idea. we're going to travel up oh, to yeah. Loch Ness, <laughs> where it all stemmed from. And uh, so a quick weekend of and of agony, <laughs> death by running this time. <laughs> yeah, mate, no, it might be. Yeah. You didn't die in the water. I'm going to try and die on outskirts instead. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not too hot. Get your stroke. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, so the last episode went out like four months ago. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've taught this. I've taken it pretty seriously, as you, you guys probably know. I'm a bit OCD sure. with stuff like this. As soon as I got a goal in mind, I was like, right, we're having this. How many runs have you done? Uh, 36. Oh, 35, actually. It's 35 That's yesterday. Fine. 35. How many ailments have you had from running? <laughs> Not, nothing major. Probably cool if we go around and we do like a little bit of a how training has been going, actually. So for me, when we first made that claim to do the marathon, I was running a bit anyway not crazy like I, you know you guys know like I don't run crazy distance but I was a steady I could go out and do a steady like six seven miles or something in an evening and not worry about it too much so I knew that the marathon thing was on the list anyway that was like in the back of my mind so I was like okay right I'll just plod away and just sort of you know <laughs> keep a bit of fitness there just in case it comes up so yeah, my, my training's been actually okay. I've sort of stuck to what I said when we made the claim that we're going to do this marathon, which was three runs a week, mm-hmm. one long one, which pushes you a little bit, and then two quite steady ones. That's what I did. Um, and I've, I've, like I say, there's been bits. I mean, I don't like running. It's shit. <laughs> it's shit. It's boring. For the most part, it's pretty boring. And whoever said that it was good for your health, like, yeah. you get back, you hurt, you know, you, you just feel, you feel drained, don't you? Can do. 
can do. I mean, there's, I do like, that, that's totally probably a, bit, a little bit false. I do like running when it's that six, seven mile, when it's enjoyable. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, come home and you're still okay. You have a shower, carry on with the rest of your day or evening. But when you're out pushing it and things really start to hurt and cramp, I mean, it's like anything, I guess, but yeah, it's quite boring at times. <laughs> It's mainly, it's mainly it's still a little bit boring. There's a lot of hard work gone into it. Yeah. You know, when, when you finish a day at work. Yeah. And then you get home and you're like, great, I'm going to do a 10 mile run now. <laughs> and then when I get home, I'm going to cook my tea. It, it really is hard work. Yeah. It's, it's taking up so much time. It's it's grind. Especially for you and your job, Al, with um, how physical it is. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I get to midday and think, wow, I feel bloody great. I'm going to go home, like I say. Crack out a run, easy as, and it gets to mid afternoon. Yeah. I'm not so keen anymore. <laughs> a bit of weather's coming in, you know. I'm feeling a bit tired now, and then yeah, gets to end of the day. And I just don't want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to run after yeah. work. It's hard to so, get motivated. Yeah, you don't go to bed. Yeah, like, yeah. You get home, you do a couple of hours running, you eat, like you say, shower, and then you're in bed, and that's it. Day's done. Up again next day. It does go. Yeah, definitely. Like, that's why I was time in a way a while ago making those little videos to YouTube because I was like I didn't yeah. want to go out and run like I'd get home a long day like you said driving meetings whatever yeah, you sure. get home and you're like oh, I just want to stop not necessarily even watch yeah. TV because I don't really no. do that anymore just stop and eat or whatever and like no but you do feel really good once you've made yourself go out the door and you strap your shoes on and you've conquered you're in a bitch and you've gone out for a run you're in a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Conquer the in a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. That's, That's why I was making little videos. Because as soon as you get over it, and you know, as soon you, as you're out, it's yeah, fine, isn't 10, it? 15 uh, minutes in, yeah. I'm like making little videos to you guys, like, Wee! I'm out running, it's mega. Yeah. That's it. Those things you're doing that day, aren't you aren't doing it for that day. You're doing it for the improvement tomorrow. True. And true. then the next day, you improve for the next day. And it all, it's like yeah. a snowball effect. Yeah. 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 Just getting going and getting started. As soon as you out the door I found it great fun I actually quite enjoy running now. yeah I'm probably being a little bit over um, I don't enjoy it like I say but I do enjoy it all at the same time there's been certain runs I, th- I think I said to you guys on WhatsApp age ago it's like an 80-20 split like 80% of it's really good fun yeah and then there's the 20% where it's just a grind and you're just like hurting and yeah going up the lane at end of run yeah <laughs> going up there <laughs> I had to climb up that bugger to get back to the house. <laughs> it's a yeah. lovely night, flat for ages. Nah, I feel great with me. Then you get round corners. Oh no, yeah. Got to get up there. Tempted to get the phone out and make a call for a lift. <laughs> An Uber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess the people are listening, so James lives at the top of a pretty steep hill. It's called well, well, Win Hill. Win Hill, Hill, yeah. Yeah, so uh, ending your run is a yeah. mile and a half, probably. Of, sheer uphill it's just a drag man it's very annoying hill Fun. it's deceiving that's what it is it's a I deceiving bet. hill I bet yeah. I bet you don't seem bad in the car at the end of the day but when you're running or riding up it yeah yeah it's alright bugger <laughs> 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 so yeah so my training been alright I've been I've stuck to my game I've been you know my three runs a week. We've done a few which we've really pushed each other with with Chris. I guess that was that was nice running with him because he gave good. us quite a lot of tips. Yeah. Okay. So I'll probably listen so we'll give him a shout out because Chris is like Chris is an ultra runner from Sheffield who I used to know from back in the day. You didn't know him at all, did you, Al? No. Uh, and he just messaged because he saw what we were doing. But again, which was really nice to be honest. You know, he saw what we were running this marathon and he wanted to help out by going out for a run with us. But I guess the negative of that is it was a bit of a beast and he pushed us probably a little bit, <laughs> a little bit harder than we should have been going. And the thing is, it's like, you know, a lot of the runs <clears throat> I've done have been pretty flat. Like I've stuck to the canal and I've just tried to get like decent mileage in. The fun stuff for me is going and running in the hills. But when you start doing more distance out in the hills, that's when it got a bit sketchy sometimes. And you're like, I'm probably going a little bit far here. Like I'm... 14 miles away from home and I'm <laughs> up a massive hill. I remember the first run that we did with him. It was the hottest day on record. Oh, it was. And we did we did a 15k run yeah. up to the hot top of a hill, back down, up to another one, back down. Yeah, we did. And then we went swimming afterwards <laughs> in a river. And it's just like, what are we doing? <laughs> it's so run, hot. It's yeah. so hot. Mm. Yeah, I was in bed at six that day. 
Yeah, it was. Why? <laughs> Dead training. It's too hot. I got my face on, and it was so hot. It was hot in the factory in the day. Like, it was humid. Oh, I just weren't. I was not keen on running that night. No. I no, I've missed, missed running with Chris, actually, haven't I? Yeah, I yeah. I've not drawn you guys. No, no. Shame. It is a shame. It's a shame for me. It's a no. shame, real shame. <laughs> not going out running with an ultra runner who just <laughs> jogs away in front of you. Like Pied Piper, and we're like behind, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been fun. I don't know. It's been cool. So many people have reached out and offered to help, which has been really nice. So. Yeah, we got some we got some kit coming as well, which is pretty cool. I'm not told you about, but we got some some nice kit coming to wear. Oh, short shorts, yeah. Got some shorts. Yeah, yeah. Some short shorts. shorts though. I like my short shorts. <laughs> the shorts. They're not as restrictive. You can cut them. Yeah, you can. Thank you. We'll make a cut mark for you. Thank you, mate. So we got some shorts coming and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's awesome, man. But yeah, my training's been like I said, my training's been okay. I've had a few niggly things go on. Like I've got a bit of a toe injury at the minute, which is sounds like it should be nothing, but it's actually hurting like hell. I've somehow done something to my toe. I don't Did know. you crack it? No, I don't yeah, know. You know, when you, you know when you put your foot behind your other foot to take your shoe off and you use your toe as like leverage? No, I don't do laces. And no, I don't. Slide. You don't have any laces in your shoes. I've just seen them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. So it's like that That feeling of pushing a shoe off, is. it feels like I'm doing that all the time. So yeah. I, yeah, so I've got that going on. A little bit of thing in my, is that your hamstring at the back? little bit of a thing there where after a bit of time it starts tightening up but you'll get tired from driving though with that yeah you know, change, probably flexes change. and yeah yeah i've always had terrible flexibility and i like yeah. i'm awful i'm not flexible at all the amount of driving and traveling you do yeah yeah it'd be a bugger for that true i've tried to i've, I've made a conscious effort to try and stretch a little bit more because that's one yeah. thing i don't do i'll just run and then just get in shower cold shower usually and then done where i've tried to like Warm down, walk a little bit after, like the whole the whole deal. Um, that, that seems to have helped, I don't know. But I'm quietly confident at the minute because yeah yeah because I I've done you know a few long ones. Um, you know I did a twenty point five mile the other week. Had some tips about nutrition off a guy who does ultra run, running, which was amazing. Basically, eat pork pie. <laughs> Everyone can eat pork pie, so that's been pretty fun. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm, it's going to be hard as fuck. Like, I know that for a fact. Like, I know for a fact. it's Because I feel like I get to a point, and it's, I know exactly where it is. It's a 17 to 18 mile yeah. where everything seizes up, and I'm just fucked. But then I've, it's having the tools to be able to, like, get through that. Yeah. I think when you see the crowds and yeah, you get the that's what everybody the says support, yeah. you'll just keep pushing and yeah. pushing. That's what everyone sort says. of ignoring the distance in a way, I think. Mm. Yeah. Like you say. And it's such a beautiful run as well, scenic area that yeah. I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It'll be nice. I, I know when I'm out, I check my distance all the time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, God, are we all See, I don't. I don't. I just put Do my phone know? in my bag and just leave it. And I just have a rough idea how far I'm going and then it's almost yeah. a mystery when you get back and you look at your thing and I'm like, oh, I was wondering if that was maybe playing on your mind. No, nah, I don't. Like, see a distance, you're like, oh, I'm getting to midpoint. Because I know I used to do that with my riding. Right. I'd get to pretty much 20k, actually. And my body would just like, pretty much stop. Right. Just stop cramping up. Yeah, full on bonk. It seemed to be nothing I could do would help it until I started just to ignore. Mm. So we know it kind of I suppose that's what's hitting a wall, isn't it? They always yeah, go about hitting thing. a wall. Yeah. But you get your body runs out of salt that's and mind minerals thing, and stuff, and that's why that guy said pork pie because yeah. it's full of fat and it's full of salt and shit basically. But it does yeah. help. Like it has tried it. I've tried it twice now. Yeah. At a point where I would usually be fucked, I've had half a pork pie a bit before and then a bit after, and I've been fine. I just run through it. Yeah, Which is right. good, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems well, it's good that you've tried it though, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I wanted to try and learn things, things like that's yeah. really important, like you say, with carrying on you going. Well, I wanted to try and dial that stuff in because I never eat when I go for a run, I never, I, I never can't. used to take water yeah. and I never used to take food. But now I've obviously realized that having a pocket full of jelly babies or something is actually quite important. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully, I think on the marathon there's going to be feed stations. A couple, a couple of gel stations. I don't there think. Is. I don't think we're in for Carvery or anything like that. <laughs> the Tony Carvery halfway around. Right? Gammon, gammon and beef, please, love. <laughs> oh, you're just jogging on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Pouring gravy everywhere. I don't know. 
<laughs> so yeah, um, like I say, I know that I know it's gonna be hard, but I'm I'm feeling okay. I'm quietly quietly not confident, but because it depends. It's like you know, there's that eighty twenty split of sometimes it's really nice. The last long run I did, the twenty point five mile, felt like it just went so easily, like a breeze. But whereas then you can go out and do a ten mile, mm. and it's just gnarly. But I also think a lot of that is. And I might be wrong, but a lot of it's just in your brain. If you go yeah, out, definitely. if you set off going, I'm going to do six mile, when you get to five, you're knackered. But if you go out saying, I'm going to do 20, you'd never notice that five or six mile. No, you just mm-hmm. blitz straight through yeah. it. Yeah. So just I've noticed that way, as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've mm-hmm. noticed that like more as I've been doing this. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I've got to admit that 10 mile I did, yeah, cranking up them miles. <laughs> Last week, um, the first half, was horrible. I did not like the first half. I was out of rhythm. Yeah. Uh, I was proper slamming the floor with my feet. My timing was awful. And I got halfway and I had a bit of a stretch and a bit, bit of a talking to. Him. No, no, mm. Come on, mm. pick yourself up here, James. You can do this. And do you know what? On the way back, it was so easy. I just felt like he breathed. Really? Yeah, everything flowed. I got a nice rhythm going. Yeah. And yeah, it was just nice and smooth, to be honest. And that I enjoyed. Yeah. So the going out was horrible, but coming back, I really enjoyed it. Cool. Yeah. Chris gave us that little tip, well, gave me a little tip when we were out running about putting your arms down and that's right. Yeah, man, I got biceps hey. again. I was jacked, you bro. Know, holding yourself too hard. <laughs> yeah, but you do, you get you pain do. and your sh- shoulders yeah. start hurting, so just having your arms yeah, a bit more flexible, that's, that's made a bit of a difference. You feel like when you see someone running and you go, oh, look at that idea. Yeah, with but, floppy hands. Yeah, like, yeah, that is actually probably about the how you're meant to be running, I think. Definitely. So I've been doing that a lot more. Keeping my arms down. My Same arms way. were hurting towards the end of that run. Yeah. Definitely. So I was holding them up. Mm. Yeah, but it never twigged on. I never thought. Yeah. It does, it does help. So I've been doing that a little bit. And uh, trying to think. I, I've learned a lot from running because I've been listening to podcasts, which have been pretty cool. I'm a bit gutted about the no headphone thing. I'm not going to lie. That was when I read that on the uh, wave or all this, the information email we got. And it yes. said no headphones. And I was like, ah. I thought we were doing it together, boys. But well, <laughs> clearly we were you know when you separately. when you hear a good beat and yeah. it's just like you're running along and the music's good. You're like, yes. yes. I don't listen to music when I run. Right. Ever. See, I've had to because it makes me go too fast. Yeah. Yeah. For that exact reason. Yeah. So if I if I don't listen to it, I can think my way through it. Yeah. Hundred percent. And find it much easier to balance the feeling of my breath and my heart mm. instead of following a beat. Because you do follow a beat. Yeah. yeah, you do a good song. To be fair, in and you do speed up. If you're covering up the sound of your breath, you're probably cheating a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Because it's nice to hear, like, oh, I'm, I'm tired, I need to probably slow down. Yeah. Um, again, the longer ones I've done, I've had with no headphones, so I broke my headphones um, from sweating in them too much, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah, how, how are your shoes about. getting on? Shoes are knackered. My shoes are totally fucked. I mean, <laughs> didn't think this through, did he? No. See? Less miles, fresh kicks. <laughs> <laughs> You've still got labour on yours. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're going back. No, my, shoes are, back. Uh, my shoes are pretty toasted, actually. Um, I didn't really think much about that, about buying nice shoes or anything. I just went to... Oh, yeah, you're still in the... Carry Moors. Yeah, 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 sort yeah. of off-roady. Off-road ones. Fell really tight shoes. Yeah. They're really hard. They do hurt my feet, I think. Probably some what, of the, like, the, they're a very hard density, sole. Yeah. yeah. And like I think some of the toe problem could be because of those shoes, maybe. Yeah. Like I never sized them up or anything, I just bought them because they were relatively cheap from Sports Perfect. Direct. Perfect. It's like they'll do. And yeah, they're pretty goose right now. Like the toes are falling out and I've stitched them back not stitched, I've glued them back together once as well. Jesus. <laughs> I was gonna tally up actually how many miles I've done in them. I was gonna tally it up how many miles I've done in them. I was interested to see like how well they've done because from when I started marathon training on my Strava, so marathon training one, that's when I bought those shoes. So yeah. every, every run's been in one Actually, pair. Yeah. I wanted to try and track how they're, how how they're going to do. So And um, then write to the company. I've only had 1,000 miles <laughs> out of <Yeah>. these trainers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, good, good training journey. It's been a... I've, I've, yeah, I've learned a lot I listened to some nice music while I've been running which has been one of the best things I think um, discovered some new bands which has been pretty cool listened to some cool podcasts and done a great lot of thinking 
which is really nice as well. I like the pink inside yeah. of it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and as I've, as I've done more running, I've discovered that I like not having headphones anyway. Yeah. Because I just like to think. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been... I've had some moments out there on the trail. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Good, man. Yeah. yeah I like so it. that's been my running journey. Like I said, I'm coming into it relatively confident that the distance is going to be a problem, but not a real problem. So that's where I'm at with it. I was trying... Um, I was trying put things into a bit of perspective with training and challenges and stuff like that. So I always think of, I don't know how to word it, something where I've been in a, te- a bad, a bad, uh, difficult or a bad mm. situation. You know, that, that's been my worst thing. So whatever I do now is easier than that. So I used to tell myself, oh, you, you've been through worse, you've done worse. So like running in minus temperatures or yeah. doing distance where you bonked or something like that, you know, you've always done worse. Yeah. And then... You keep telling yourself that, and if you do something that's actually worse than what you've done, yeah. you're like, oh no, wait, that's now my worst. So then that moves over there. And you're setting the bar. And you say, yeah, you change the bar all the time. Yeah. So whenever I go out and do something, I always think, no, oh, it's easy this because I've done worse. Cool. Another way of thinking, which I do quite a lot, is how many other people have done it. Yeah, a lot of people have run a marathon. Yeah. So it's not impossible. It's not impossible. So it's definitely from that point, I'm quite confident I can do it. It's still got that thing though when you tell someone I'm running a marathon people go ooh yeah, that's pretty hard it is a it fair is distance it's hard it is hard, it's hard. Be yeah hard. of course it is I know what you mean though like yeah a lot of people have run marathons a lot of people have trained for a marathon yeah um, but saying that it's still still going to be pretty difficult yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not like yeah it's not like yourself and you're done yeah you do yeah. have to put the effort in yeah, yeah. yeah it's a lot of time on your feet yeah it is you know a fast marathon is like three and a half four hours that's a fast marathon. I'd be lucky to get anywhere near that. I know. I know. But that's... How's your pace been? Have you any idea? Yeah, good actually. Yeah. Yeah, my, mine doesn't seem to really change. I'm like eight and a half minute miles consistently. Towards, obviously I push into nines as I get tired around the 20 mile mark. Yeah. So they say that it's your half marathon speed time doubled plus 10%. So on paper, oh, okay. it, it should take me four and a half hours ish. Do you, you want? Have you got a target? Well, this is a thing, isn't it? So, so this is something that we probably need to talk about because the initial idea was to run it together, right? Which, in a way, I'm still sort of up for, right? In a way, but but when you think about it logically, and and I was talking to someone else about this the other day. We all run at a different speed. We definitely do. So it's like when I've been out running with Alex and Chris, he's like way faster than me. Yeah. I so that too. on paper, and probably will, Alex will probably finish before me because he'll go and I'll struggle to catch him up because I just plod. I'm just like really steady. I just plod, plod, plod. Um, I feel like if you run slower, you could fuck yourself up as well. Yeah, you because you're to trying to hold yourself. You just need to get into a rhythm. Yeah, and just get and that flow, and not be like waiting or running too fast. So that's something I've been thinking about a bit, really. That I've got a bit of a plan in my head. How I want to do it, to be honest. But we'll see if that plays out or not. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. 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 That. Yeah. That's where I'm at with it. To be honest, because I don't want to. Um. What's the? I don't want to like underachieve but I don't want to push myself too hard where I'm fucked at the end of so it are you seeing this as a challenge or a race type thing or? still mainly a challenge yeah. 100% like doing a marathon anyway is going to be really difficult I've just got a goal in my head that I'd like to run it at a pace I'm comfortable with if that makes yeah. sense does that make sense yeah that's where I'm at with it what about you I'd like to get about four four hours I think yeah so you do uh, have a goal, you have a property. Yeah, then. yeah, I'd quite like to get four. But we'll see. We'll see what happens fast. because four hours is Yeah, fast. do you know how fast you have to run for that? Like a minute a mile or two or not? not I know. No, no I idea. Say I can't wear that. I'd say it's like quick maths, like. under eight minutes. I've been training yeah. with a Springer Spaniel, so I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I am on it. <laughs> You've got to keep up. Unless I see a pheasant, then I'm off. <laughs> 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 No. How's, I, um, how's your training been going anyway? It, yeah. it was going well up until probably about a month ago when I had a bit of an accident at work and I partially tore a ligament in my knee 
Um, and now that I've blown all my life savings on physio, we're, we're, we're back on track, I think. So I, I had to start off, oh my God, they're so expensive. <laughs> it works up, doesn't it? The one at the road have a huge extension, haven't they? Like yeah, he's driving wing. back in a yeah, Bentley. Yeah. It's <laughs> really nice. <laughs> Alex o- the Alex Owen wing outside. <laughs> Uh, no, no, he's he's done he's done me proud. He's uh, he's he's fixed me. Yeah, I think so. Um, but unfortunately, I had to start back at square one again, at running five miles uh, for a week, mm. and I've got to just pick it up faster than you normally would pick it up. Mm. But it's amazing in three weeks how much how how fast your muscle deteriorates mm. if you're not using it. Yeah. Because I remember running five miles, and I was like legs hurt the next day and I was like I was pretty tired yeah it just after three weeks and before then I was running 15 mile comfortably right wow. um getting ready to pick it up to about 20 mile and then that happened tore partially tore the ligament um but now we I, I'm, I'm feeling confident about it it's, mm. it's gonna be I'm nervous but confident mm. you know there's, there's a lot of effort gone into it and I think just out of sheer determination, I'll finish. Yeah. yeah. And yeah hopefully, I think that wins a lot, of, under, a lot of the time, doesn't it? Under four. <laughs> <laughs> it <laughs> it <laughs> under four would be huge. Yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so, uh, like I said, I'm, I wouldn't personally expect to get under four because I know what my pace is like. I'll just stay the same. The whole I can time. see you're splitting up definitely during this. Oh, yeah. I think we've got effort. Sometimes, I think we've got <laughs> her in a way. Yeah. Because otherwise, we're going to either hold someone back or push too hard. And then end up just being screwed. Yeah. No, I think you're right. You know, like I said, things have happened, haven't they? Between us setting the goal of doing it, things have just happened. You know, you've been busy with racing. Yeah, that's it's been a difficult one for me with training. When we when we set out to do it, I think we had something like twenty four weeks. I think it was. Yeah. I remember thinking we've got twenty four weeks right. So if I start at two miles this week, which we did. Yeah. We went out. And we did that. Oh yeah. Around, yeah. Didn't we? And then. I'll do two runs a week and I'll add half a mile on each run. Wow. Then that gets to 26. Right. Come the end of it. Right. Yeah, I didn't plan out like that. <laughs> in the slightest. I don't think I ran at all for the first two or three weeks. And then, yeah, steadily got into it up around the hill, which was amazing. I enjoyed that. I started with the start pretty small. Um, yeah, five miles. Like you said, I was in a lot of pain after that. But I made sure I ran up hills on purpose because I knew running up them would be a lot harder than running on the flat. Mm. So I figured mm. I can get more quality in doing a shorter run up, up yeah. the hill. Wow. You know, yeah. sort of the long way around it as well. So mm. not straight up it because, you know, in 15, 20 minutes you're at the top. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's a long drag up to, um, oh, what's it called now? The Beast. Yeah. So it brings from the bottom of Hope, if anyone knows it. When I vaguely know it, but yeah, to the base, it's just just gentle uphill kind of thing, but yeah. it is uphill yeah. and it does beast you with a couple of little climbs here and there, and then back on yourself to the top of Winnell and back down and around. It's about ten k. Right, I get out of it. Yeah, so that was good. I was enjoying that, and then like you say, racing happens, and then unfortunately injuries happen. Yeah, how many injuries have you had? Do you think since we last recorded an episode? <laughs> <laughs> Four or five, I think, Jesus. and mainly to the legs. Yeah, it's true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is... How funny, I'll never unreal. forget when, when you rang. Okay, so I, I remember it like the cleanest day. You rang on a Thursday and said, I can't run because I've hurt my ankle. I was like, okay, cool, take take it easy. We went out for a run, me and Alex. You rang on Friday and said, I can't run, I've hurt my ankle. And I was like, yeah, I know, like you told me yesterday. And you were like, no, 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 other ankle now. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> yeah, I got that weird lump on my foot as well, if you remember. It's in the photo. Oh, yeah. Just behind my toes. Yeah, I managed to crash and slide down a hill on my knees and go over a pile of rocks. And a lump appeared. <laughs> which <laughs> still hurts. Jeez. So that's not ideal. And the ankle's still sore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was both ankles. And I've hurt both knees and both hips. And my back since. And just with little niggling silly yeah, things. you hurt your back as well. Ow. You forgot yeah, about that. Your back. Yeah, you got your back out. I, well, I slipped a disc um, <laughs> last year. Yeah. And I still have percussions from that, you know. It's never, it's not going to get better ever, really. Um, it's a bugger for it, though, isn't it, with the jolting. Do you find it 
Yeah, I went for a up. run up the canal the other day and I was like, I got up and I, I could walk. I've hurt my back the day before, so I could walk and I was like, okay, hopefully it'll ease off as I get running. So I'm running along the canal and I could hardly run. And I was like, keep going, keep <laughs> going. <laughs> like Tim Man. Yeah, just like so. And then trying to run normally as soon as someone comes up to you, you're trying to like run as if you're like, you're not in pain, everything's okay. Because <laughs> you're running. And you're like, right, retard. So... I got running and I got to, everything eased off and I got into the flow and I did about seven miles and then I was coming back and uh, I started to stiffen up again and then it got even worse because then I needed a poo as well. And then, <laughs> so I'm, just like, like, I'm just dreading that hadn't happened on the run. Yeah, I'm worried about that. I, I think it will. I think it does. A little nervous poo. Not only that, I just think the, the jolting of your insides just... I think that too. It does. It stirs it up, doesn't it? Yeah. And we were yeah. joking. Remember? It, <laughs> it does. <laughs> we were joking. We went for a run and we were saying like how being at the back of the marathon is probably like the smelliest place you can be. It probably smells yeah. worse than Chernobyl back there. Right? <laughs> well, everyone mean... just farts. Like, I do. I'll run. I'm just like... This one over here does. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's true though, everything but I just dip into that bush when we went on the canal in the week. You did, yeah. Yeah. Had to uh detour off. Yeah, it's true. That, There's definitely yeah, toilets along to that. The the route. Hundred percent. Like all the way. Like a railroad portal. Twenty six miles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when, they, the, when the crowd the runs, they like get all those ones and put them back <laughs> to the front. They just keep moving. They're just on a flat bed. Yeah, they just keep moving them round. So yeah, I'm slightly worried about that to be honest. Because yeah, because yeah, we're gonna have to eat loads in the morning, and I think our set off time's pretty early as well. We've got to be there at like seven or something. So it's gonna be an early start. Get yeah, a load up for that food in and get going. Eat some pork pies and crack some on. Pork pie. mm. <laughs> get red pork pie and milk for breakfast. <laughs> Grim. I imagine it soaks it up now. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like wheat mix. <laughs> pork pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so, yeah, training wise hasn't been great for me, I've got to admit. No. Racing has took a priority in mountain biking, but that's now finished as of this weekend, plus two more injuries. So. <laughs> That's that's done now. So we've got from now. We've how long we got? Three weeks. Three weekends. When we're recording this, there's like three we're... weekends, isn't there? And then when this goes out, we'll be a week before the marathon. Yeah. A week and a half before the marathon. Depending. So when are you going to do your last run? You guys. What do you think? Good point. Good question. So I'm going away on Friday for eleven days to a trade show, and trade shows are brutal. You're going to run around the trade show. Just been stood up on your feet for 11 days is going to be horrible talking to people. So I know for a fact I'm going to be knackered. So my plan is to take my run stuff with me and just now, I think I said to you last night as well, I'm just trying to keep on top of things. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what the, the word would be, but just maintenance. 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 Yeah, I'm just doing maintenance. I'm trying to do like three or four runs a week that are whatever distance I feel comfortable three on. Four. That. Three or four a week. Oh, yeah, but just whatever distance, it might be two mile. Yeah. Like I, I went out last night and did seven miles. Like, yeah. And that was just, I was fine. Just comfortable. I'm not pushing it too I'm much. I'm going to try and do every other day from now on. Right. But get some actual But there's like this game now of how hard you go so you're not tired. Yeah, anymore. this is the if difficult thing. I'm struggling yeah. with my heart rate. Mine goes up very quickly, especially running. Because I've been cycling for so long, I can keep it pretty mellow when I'm pushing hard on that. But mm. I'm finding when I'm running, it's just skyrocketing. I easily jump to 160. Really? Quite easily going to 170 and 180, which isn't ideal for that distance. Yeah. So I have to find, in order to bring mine back down to something comfortable, I have to go so slow and it's boring as hell, man. Mm. So yeah, that 10 miler, my heart rate average 154. Is that, I, I don't really it's know it. Probably a little shoulder. high for is wanting it? to do a marathon right. distance. Like right. keeping your heart at that for that long is probably not ideal. Yeah. Okay. All right. But is it what my heart likes? That's, That's the other question. My, my body might be happier doing that. Yeah. I guess. Like I said, I don't really know much about but it. But then, so. like I so you, you, you can push quite easily, push slightly too hard one day and then it can mess you, you up for the next however many days. Do you think sometimes it's good to be naive to that stuff? Yeah. Because no, we, I've never looked at anything. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to because I do quite, you know, we train together and stuff. I find it quite interesting, but 
I've never looked at my heart rate or I just go on how I feel. It's like, right, I feel good. And also, like we were saying before about like just your mindset, I'm like, right, I'll be saying to myself on Wednesday, on Sunday, I am running whatever, yeah. 18, 20 miles. And you like gear yourself up for it and then you just go and do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not yeah, like yeah, looking at anything. Right. There's no analytics going on. It's just a case of just sticking to the program and listening to my listening to my body a little bit. That's where I struggle. I overthink things. Yeah. I always have done and stuff like that. As soon as numbers start coming into my head and I start reading more about them, I don't know it. Like I'm no. not trained in that kind of thing. I don't understand it. Fully. It's interesting. I've got an idea. Of yeah. It, yeah. And I do sort of know from training and cycling what I can do. You know, to push myself mm-hmm. and like develop, but. I am struggling with running. It is, it is it's horrible. Different. I, it, I reckon it might use different muscles, but a different way of using your muscles. Like you. And also different muscles. And yeah, I do think it does use them slightly different muscles, yeah. 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 I mean, it's similar action, isn't it? It's pedaling. I think as well with the running, it's the, it's the constant monotony of it almost. I feel like if you're riding, for example, if we're related to riding, you can shift your feet on the pedals a little bit, so you're switching your muscle groups. Yeah, you can stand, you can sit, yeah, you, you can, can move your toes, toes forward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but with running, now, especially with this marathon we're doing, it's pretty straight, it's pretty flat. Yeah. And it's just a constant hammering of those few muscle groups. Because I find that if you do a run with some hills in it, it just breaks things up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, your like, toes a bit. Your toes a little yeah. bit, or you're running downhill yeah. a little bit. When you're just doing the flat, monotonous bang 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 on the same things that's I think, that's yeah. when cramp seems to start to like really yeah. set in yeah I think that's where I was for that last 10 mile that I went on I was thinking on the way out was rubbish on the way back was better because mm-hmm. I was thinking about my feet right so mine tend to roll to the outside so like when my foot picks up to run my little toe will drop down and my big toe will pick up kind of thing yeah. no idea why but I'll watch it and, you'll, and I'll almost see the insole of my foot right I don't know why it does it <laughs> And I know my right leg suffers from an injury to the knee. It, my toes point out. Mm. So I, it, I find it quite difficult to run properly yeah. because that foot pointing out and that my left foot's dished kind of thing. And mm. You'll be really entertaining to watch, especially if Thank you need you. a poo. <laughs> <laughs> With that running stance. I do I have to really think about it. And like if, if I think about swaddle. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, yeah, if you proper think about it and actually like you say get into not just slamming the pavement but not this but if you get into a bit of a rhythm and smooth it out then it's a lot easier mm. it is a lot easier mm. right. it's, it's interesting but I do I overthink things you you always said though from the get go that you struggle with running like, well, yeah. you're, you said that from when we initially the thing is like we've still got to do this 100 mile bike ride and you're that I don't mind <laughs> you're best <laughs> yeah, you know, I, mean, I don't mind right, I, I know that. that'll be awful for me, you know, yeah, because I'm just, I don't know, conditioned to it, yeah, exactly, I'm that's right, exactly, it's conditioning to it, so many years, I've not run it. since I played five side football, yeah, quite a few <laughs> years ago, really? which wasn't really running in a way, you're a bit back and forth, aren't you, with that yeah, kind yeah, of thing, a so. sprint, then yeah. a walk, and then, yeah, whereas this is a monotonous, this is constant, grind, constant, mm. but, it's what we signed up for, so we're exactly. doing it. Looking forward to it, though. It's, it's great to have right a fresh right. challenge in your head. Yeah, I think we've got to remember why we're doing it as well. Yeah. You know, what, what actually happened and the whole reason that we're forcing ourselves mm. to yeah, go yeah, back up to Scotland. <laughs> it's true. And dance. It's true, it's true. No, I agree, I agree. Like I say, sometimes you do, yeah, you think about why we're doing it and it, it is a bit of fuel on the fire and I think that will carry us through as well, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to flip gears on you a little bit. What's been like the worst and best thing about training for this marathon for you, James? Why do I just feel like I'm a fucking host? Jesus Christ. Because you are, man. <laughs> you are. It's, it's, in your, it's in your blood now. This is who you are. But actually, weirdly, the worst thing about this training was Friday, just gone. I was over in... France doing the last Enduro round, yeah. um, European round, and they had these sort of, well, made obviously, um, hot springs kind of thing, they're not, it's just like a big warm bath with friends, and in one small area was a cold plunge pool, and I thought, I mean, this would be good for my body, my aching body, getting the cold, getting the hot, you know, mm-hmm. a bit back and forth like that. Got in it, sunk down to my neck, and weirdly I had a very vivid flashback of being in Loch Ness. 
Wow. And it was very emotional suddenly. So for me, yeah, the worst part of it was actually that. Wow. From yeah, emotional point of view. Physical, I don't mind going through pain. I'm quite happy to put myself through pain. But yeah, yeah that was very weird. Wow. Very I'm weird. I'm glad you said that. So <laughs> I'm gonna elaborate on this a little bit. So oh, didn't expect this to go deep, but there we go. So <laughs> sort of did, not gonna lie. Um I've yeah, I've been having flashbacks, right? And me and Alex spoke the other day, because I was like, I was fucking hell, here we go. Especially the last few weeks. It's really weird though to have flashbacks. Yeah, right? I've never had it before. No. And and this isn't just for the sake of doing this podcast either. It's like I'm not making this shit up. It's been four months and I've only just had real flashbacks. But, right, and I don't mean to steal, steal any thunder here. So let me try and break <laughs> down the reason why because this is weird. So, I've been trying to run without headphones. This is, right, okay, God. There's a few, there's a few angles of this. I'm sorry. There's a few angles to this and why this has been right weird and and mainly really emotional recently. So the first bit is I've been running with no headphones and everyone says when you start doing longer endurance stuff, you go pretty deep and you think about stuff, which which you might not necessarily that. So I've been really mindful of that and actually trying to go out and think and work through stuff and just think about whatever. Right. Okay. So that. I've been thinking about it a lot more, but also thinking about other things which have happened in my life that affect me, like really emotionally, that like trigger things, right? Yeah. So I've been thinking about that as well, right? So then, yeah, so I was randomly talking about this with Emma the other night, saying, look, I've been having flashbacks and I didn't know if to say anything, so I didn't know if it was a bit, a bit silly or not, but mainly at night, I'm gonna sleep and I'll mm-hmm. think about drowning and things okay, so, and things that were going through my head when you think you're going to drown which is the things that have happened in my life that I've thought about when I've been out running okay so the other night we sat me and Emma and we were watching an episode of Black Mirror have you watched Black Mirror before? I've seen a bit of it yeah okay they were a bit weird they were a bit like yeah, black yeah. comedy a bit dark there's an episode episode called Crocodile and this episode this episode it, it, it revolves around being able to look into people's minds and seeing what they saw at a particular time, okay? Yeah. And this, God, it's so hard to explain, I'm really sorry. But, so this episode is a revol- revolves around looking into someone's brain and seeing flashbacks that they saw at a certain time and it like proper triggered something in me because it's what... It's like, okay, so I'm having flashbacks, but the flashbacks aren't necessarily about drowning. They're about what I was thinking as you're thinking you're going to drown. Makes sense? Yeah. So that's been like, and I said to you the other day, I was like, I'm having like a bad time, like bad, because I was thinking about it like way too much. And every time I thought about flashbacks, I thought about the other two things that have happened in my life that I can't deal with, that just make me cry and I just want to yeah shut down so it's been a bit, a bit weird that it's like really started to come up and I'm I'm not going to say what they are because they're quite personal but a few things have happened that have affect me like to the point where I just can't like even talk about it um, so yeah it's strange that you said that that you've had a flashback because I didn't really believe in them and uh, there was a time after it happened and you know we spoke about it I had like a week off off work and I just thought like I was processing stuff and I was a bit like numb where I did think about it a little bit but then there's been not really anything like I've been out with friends and it's been a bit of a joke sometimes about not being able to swim or whatever yeah which is fine naturally but happen, then yeah. it recently has started I think as other things as well have happened around me that you think about it a bit more if that makes sense yeah so yeah, the, it does yeah, so because, because, I've, probably because I have I did as well. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah I didn't really believe in it either. I thought it was, yeah, but uh, that's crazy. It was strange. It was strange. I, I, I had it though from the viewpoint. Did you call it a trigger? Of, no, uh, not yeah. necessarily because I've been in 
cold since. I don't mind mm. being in cold. I quite often go in cold. Well, I'm out riding in the hillside. It's cold. See, I, I, I really like, struggle. I don't mind because cold. I was loving the cold showers and stuff before. Yeah, but really I had really. a break of like two months where I couldn't face being in the cold. No. It just made me like no, I didn't want to go anywhere near it. No, it was weird. I got in, got into my waist, and absolutely fine. But it was when I ducked down, and the water was up to my neck. So, you know, like being looking out over the waves as we were. Mm. And it was very strange. The water in front of me all went black as though it was like in mm. where we were. Wow. It was really intense. So you said one really of the things you had, what happened is it went black. Yeah. And you could see night. Is that right? Yeah, night and, and the stars and stuff like that. Everything did the same. Yeah, yeah. Did the same. I couldn't tell if my eyes were shut or open. Jeez. It was like, it was really, really vivid. But then I used my, because I, I struggled with it, like, like you say, not long after it actually happened, I struggled for a while, feeling numb, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But now I'm, I'm starting to try and use that as, that's the worst thing that's happened to me. So, this doesn't matter. Mm, it's plain it's, sailing. But yeah, being in this cold water, I was like, do you know what, that happened, that that was terrible. This, you're not, you're just in a little plunge pool of cold water, and that was it, I snapped back out of it, I was right. fine. Right. And yeah, it was, right. it was easy, you could just sit there for ages, and not have to worry about it. Because I knew I could just get out. Yeah. You know, but so yeah. many people would come in, dip a toe, and then walk out, or come in up to the waist and get back out. And you know, do you know what? The first 10 15 seconds is the worst in yeah, cold. As soon as you're in, don't matter, it's all the same. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy, though, man. Like, it was weird. I don't think you're crazy. I mean, it's crazy <laughs> that you've had the same, like, similar sort of time that it's been that length of time, and then you have a flashback. Mm. And I didn't think it'd happen. No, no, but really? I might have been at, at night mainly, but also I'm running. And thinking about stuff. I've thought about it. Yeah. I def- I've definitely thought about it, mm. but it's nothing's took over my brain like it did mm. on Friday. See, like, it's when I strange. think about it, I think of the feeling, like I say, of nearly drowning, but then I think of the thoughts in my brain as that was happening. It's, like, really yeah. weirdly linked together. Man, was just a physical thing, I yeah. think. I don't... Because I got myself out of it pretty quick. Yeah. But yeah, it was just the view. I just had the view. Wow. Wow, powerful. Thought that, yeah, that's strange. Yeah, it is. It is. It, the, dude, these things black, and it, you know, it's 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 going to be something that never leaves us. Like we shared, like a really special thing that day, <laughs> <laughs> especially in a good way and especially in a really bad way. But we did. We shared a really special thing that not many people will go through, and it'll never go. And it's something that obviously it's happened, but it'll never probably never be like really easy to talk about because it's it's fucking. And, and the more like you do talk about it, the more you realize that. Fucking now. But that's it. That that's that's, that's one that thing that happened now. as well since we recorded an episode because we met the family that made the phone oh, call yeah, and learning yeah. about more about those people. Their side of it as well. And yeah. what happened for them to make the phone call. Yeah. You know, they heard us. The fact that they didn't have any binoculars until the day before was pretty yeah. I was pretty I blown away that. by that. Yeah, I was too. The yeah. fact that the paramedic the re- first responder that was a first oh. on scene he shouldn't have been there at no. all but he was checking out places with his photographer to take wedding photos that was amazing you know they were going to have no wedding photos where that. yeah no, he shouldn't have been there he was no. just like no. checking out somewhere to have photos with his wife potential wife potential <laughs> wife to be <laughs> yeah that was so everything, really everything, nice. everything kind of just rolled in um, uh. into position uh, yeah, it wasn't our day to die, was it? No, no. But Saving that's... it for the uh, marathon. <laughs> <laughs> that's the new bar. That's my new bar. You know, that's, that's cool. the worst things ever happened to me. So no matter what I do now, it can't be worse than that. Mm. So just carry on. That's how I'm seeing this marathon. You're just carrying on. Yeah. You just got to carry on yeah. until you get to the end. It's gonna be, I think, a pretty. I'll claim it already. Like pretty emotional thing to get to the end of that. I think. I know, we've got so. family coming up as well. There's a lot of people listening to this podcast that are coming. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, there's a few people oh, reached out that like live locally and stuff that oh, don't get me wrong, they're not flying in from different countries, I don't think. If you are then respect. No, don't um, <laughs> we're not a ticket, donate it instead yeah, to the course. Yeah, please <laughs> donate it instead. Um so there's people coming over that yeah, coming down, sorry, that, that listen to the podcast. And so many people, like I said, have reached out and I think it's gonna be a for me it's a big it's a big personal goal to do this as well. Like mm, and, and knowing that there's a bit of fuel in the fire of raising a little bit of money and you know, whether we get to the target or not right now, I mean, it doesn't really matter anymore. It does. It'd be lovely, but 
Yeah, I don't know. It'd be nice if you chuck a load at them, of course it would. Yeah, chuck a load at You have to be very mindful of, you know, raising money's hard, especially in these economic climates. (laughs) (laughs) Country's got no money, so, (laughs) you know what I mean? It's not going to be easy, but, you know, yeah. No, it is what it is. Like I say, if if we've made people aware and someone's gone and changed something about how they were approaching going out Mm. on their own, then... You know, we've helped, haven't we? Mm. Like I say, I, I bought a watch that tracks my activities now. Yeah. Mainly because when I go out in the woods on my own, no one knows where I am. Yeah. So I like saying you're up in the woods on the hill. Where? <laughs> By what tree? If you were to fall off and call someone, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know what might happen, so... Yeah. Yeah. You know, some of it, yeah, something like that. I bought a backpack with water. I never used to ride with water. Really? Yeah. I believe you can train yourself to not need it when you're out. I do believe that. Okay. But I, I take it now all the time. It's better if you need it. Just in case. It's better if you need it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Rather have it than yeah. not have it. Got a um, little pouch of super glue in case I split myself open. I can stick myself together. Good idea. My food, snacks, which I never used to take. Even yeah. if we go for an hour now, I take the bag. Really? Yeah, it's weird how it's proper, proper changed how I think about stuff like that. That's good. But like, it's, it's no trouble to take it it's not yeah. like it was a hindrance in the first place yeah you just maybe a bit ignorant to it and like i say thought you could just train without it mm. which i do believe you can but but if anything happens is it ideal is it beneficial like what gain am i getting from clipping a tree and going over bars popping a shoulder out especially you know, when you punch a wound or something like that yeah knocking your head it's true yeah it's all right with dog next year me don't know yeah <laughs> No, we can't do CPR. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going home. <laughs> we'll just sit there. <laughs> Which is lovely as that is. Yeah. It's, you know, things happen quick as we know, so. They do. Yeah. They do, they do. Yeah. Well, that's it, I guess, isn't it? I mean, good catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay, so I'll finish having another beer. Okay. I'll get it. Well, I'm going to, uh, after this, I'm going for a run. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got to. Really? Yeah. It's, All right, uh, should we wrap this thing up, then? Not been for one this week, so... Wow. Yeah, no, I don't really Hopefully, by the time this comes out, there will be some T-shirts available to buy. Not screw tops. Hopefully, by the time this comes out, there will be some T-shirts available to buy, which we're going to donate all the profit to the RNLI. Um, so I guess this is like probably the most important part of this. If you're listening, hopefully you are listening. Uh, if you've not already donated, then there is a link in the show description to donate some money to the RNLI. Um, obviously if it weren't for those guys, we wouldn't be here doing this. And it's a very important cause. It's a hundred percent volunteer run, which is pretty cool. I didn't really know that. And they've been amazingly helpful as well. Like they've been really, really great. They've reached out. We've got things going on with them, which if you follow RNLI on Instagram, you'll see that we're going to do some live videos for them and some other stuff as well. So, um, most importantly, yeah, if you're listening, please try and donate some money. What Things are hard. I understand life's tough. Money's not easy to come by, but if you can donate a couple of pounds, then uh, link in the show description and just donate what you can. And we will try and run a marathon for you. <laughs> to, for your money <laughs> and if we don't then you've donated money to an RNLI anyway and exactly. a good cause because you, you never know when you might have to use them you know you might not be you directly no, you might not someone be. you love exactly very close to you alright so cash up after marathon maybe if we can talk <laughs> maybe two or three days after on drive on drive home we can try we'll it then. we can try it sound uh. off <laughs> just whimpering <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, cool. It's a wrap. Cool. Appreciate it. Thank you. Au revoir. Cheers, boys. Peace. Easy. One, two, one, two. Testing. So here we are at the end of the podcast episode, and you've listened to it. You're at the end. You've hopefully listened to a few other episodes in your lifetime, too, and hopefully you have enjoyed listening. So please, if you can afford to, make a donation to the RNLI. We'll be keeping you up to date on Instagram and Facebook with all of the happenings at the marathon and on the run up to it. 
And also, if you can, please share this episode with your friends. It goes a long way to help raise awareness for what we are doing, but also raise awareness for being prepared when you're going out on an adventure, whether it's mountain biking, running, canoeing, hot air ballooning, I don't know, whatever it is you guys get up to, it raises awareness to be prepared for the worst. So again, huge thank you to everybody out there in podcast world who supports this podcast. Thank you once again for listening and enjoy the rest of your week. It's been emotional. Peace out. <laughs>